Hello, my name is Renzer and today we're going to talk about the easiest way to get yourself flying in the SF, which is the air to ground loadout. Now, for me, this loadout is called the Thunderbolt. It is designed to attack infantry and ground from surprise. So we're taking the Banshee. Within the Banshee we have uh, thermal optics, magazine size, and of course, you know, ammo capacity. Uh, the secondary is Hornets. Yes, Hornets. Uh, again, I take the thermals, the reload speed, because that's the only option and the magazine size. Now when it comes to the rest of, of the show, we're gonna take fire suppression, just to bail us out of those situations. We're gonna take stealth, not to be seen, and we're gonna take the hover stability. Of course, it is possible to run the same loadout as the NC. You just need the Mustang air hammer, and I guess on the VS you would put in the PPA. So, the point of the choice of the Banshee or the air hammer or the PPA is that it is the dedicated air-to-ground nose gun and is very effective at taking out infantry fast. My choice of Hornets, however, is because from my experience, Hornet missiles deliver their payload, their alpha damage very quickly compared to breaking rocket pods. Rocket pods usually um, require you to expose yourself for a long period of time, and remember, we're going, we're going to be operating from surprise uh, on low altitudes, so staying still for a long period of time, not the best idea. So now, let's look at an example of what we're going to be doing with this loadout. So I designate the area of operations, and I look for an angle that covers my approach as long as possible, because I want as little time given to the enemy to react to me. So, I locate the enemy, I pick a target or two, I strike quickly, I get a kill, and I get out. You don't st stick around for, you know, those dumb fires. You, you do what you have to do and you get away. If you start getting locked, your options are stay low and fly behind some kind of mountain range. Now, when you go for your second pass, it is important to remember that you have to use a slightly different angle to not allow the enemy to create a mental image of where you're coming from, like in this example. Imagine yourself as an air harasser. Your job is to get in, deliver the damage, get out, and get the enemy by surprise. I like to think of myself as a support vehicle, dishing out damage to help the friendly units on the ground to get the job done. As a beginner pilot, I can tell you that this game style has taught me a lot when it comes to how to you know, hide my presence, how to attack when I have the upper hand and you know, the surprise factor, and how to dodge incoming enemy fire and lock-ons by utilizing the environment. I think this game style will teach you how to survive and how to keep your ESF intact. This is one of the reasons why I don't recommend to take flares. I think every pilot should learn how to break the lock-ons by use of environment. Going air to ground, in my opinion, is also a good stepping stone when it comes to learning how to aim. Aiming with the ESF is difficult, and having small targets that move slowly is a good way to practice. Speaking of aiming, it's also important to notice that Hornet missiles actually follow your nose so you can influence their trajectory. This is kind of cool and gives you some possibilities. As long as you try to be accurate and practice, they are a great way to destroy enemy infantry. They take out maxes perfectly and can dish out quite the damage when used against tanks and other vehicles, especially from the back. You will also find them very effective against slow, big aircraft such as galaxies or even liberators. It takes a lot of practice, but the alpha damage they dish out can sometimes give surprisingly good results. Now, when you come close and get a drop on the enemy SF, it is possible to take him down instantly with two Hornets, but it takes a lot of skill, ten times as much luck, but it sure gives you a lot of satisfaction when you do it right. Now, when it comes to actually engaging enemy air, it is possible to dish out a lot of damage and take out some targets, but always go for targets of opportunity. Meaning, don't think of yourself as the main interceptor. Uh, your loadout is capable. Trust me, it is capable of giving out a lot of damage to enemy air, but if you meet a pilot of the same skill level, who is equipped specifically to take out enemy ESFs and enemy aircraft, you will be at a severe disadvantage. So if you see an opening, Go for it, just remember that you are designed for something completely different. Oh yeah, and if you're using PPA, you might want to skip the interceptor part at all. I mean, I'm sure there's some people who know how to make it work, but it's really difficult. 
So before we finish, let's talk about why I choose to fly as an engineer, not as a light assault. It is quite popular in this game to, uh, to fly as a light assault because what you do when you get shot, you just jump out and you land. I, I, I'm kind of okay with it because it feels like you know, you're know you actually catapulting for an aircraft. But what I found to be more effective is playing as an engineer because you can repair yourself, obviously. And the way that you can mitigate this bailing problem is by having a safe landing for implant. Now, it may seem uh, counterintuitive at first because you're just going to jump out and die. But remember that we're supposed to fly at low altitudes and you're going to survive everything below 150 meters. And 150 meters is quite a lot. Check it out. Jump out. Yes, we are, yes, we are. Now, before we finish, I'd like to teach you one more trick. Oftentimes, you will find yourself in a situations where your mozzie flips because you hit something on the ground. Now, you can save yourself in those situations by holding the descent button, which is control for me. It works because descending just takes your mozzie down in relation to where the down should be for the mozzie, not where it is in real life. So if you flip, you hold descent, you wiggle left and right, and you're right way up again. Anyway guys, I hope you found my beginner's tutorial on ground pounding useful and I'd like to invite you to the rest of the clip, I think it's kind of funny, and I hope to see you both on stream and in game. Renzer out.